Hi, today we're going to build dynamic and accessible radio buttons that you can even control with your keyboard just like this and they're going to be rendered dynamically from our variable in WIST that can be either populated manually or from your database or from an input field that will populate this as well. So the possibilities here are endless. So let's get started right now in how we set this wonderful uh, radio button set up that is fully accessible so it can be recognized by screen readers, voice over for example, it's called by Apple devices and it is fully accessible with all your keyboard shortcuts up and down and even left to right and the wonderful thing is it's also mobile responsive. So this is like the non plus ultra for radio buttons. And let me bust the secret. We're actually not using radio buttons. So let's go to Webflow and let me show you how we built this whole thing. So we have this container that is just a diff block holding the radio buttons. And we have the radio holder. And this is the thing that will only hold the radio button. So this is where it will be rendered within. And then we have the button radio. So it's not a radio button, it's a button radio. It's mainly a button. So we use a custom element in Webflow and um, that we're going to give the tag of button. And we give it the role of radio. So we treat this button like a radio button. And we're going to give it the area checked of false and the tab index of zero. We're going to modify this using some custom code later on. And we're going to give it the data name of group one. This is the group that you want to assign to those buttons when they are rendered. So if you want to render a second button list, you, you will be more than likely giving that button from which you're rendering the second list a different group. And you may want to update the code or uh, use the code again just to make sure that the code is now targeting the other group as well. And we have the WIST attribute of radio button. So this is how WIST will recognize this element. And we're going to set WIST cloak as true. You don't need to do true, but we're just going to apply WIST cloak on it because we want to avoid any content flashing. And then we just have the one in here. You can just leave it blank or whatever. That is not important for right now. And now we're going to have in hidden input field. So this is where, since we're not using radio buttons, we don't have a way of basically getting the value that was clicked. We need to use custom code. So wherever it's focused or clicked on, this value will be put into a hidden input field. And believe it or not, this is actually the simplest way of doing it. Because if you use native web flow, radio buttons, uh, you have an issue. It just isn't compatible with WIST. It'll just give you like five radio buttons when you render them dynamically. And when you check uh, Joe, it'll give you radio button one, Joe. And now you remove Joe and you want to check Elvis, it'll say radio button two, Elvis. But it still keeps Joe. It just renders the list of the radio selectors, which is not intended. And the other solution would be using HTML embeds or custom radio buttons, but they are very hard to work with because you have to have the radio button and you need to have a label in front of the radio button for the label. You cannot do it in one component. And then somehow with WIS, when you render the list, they get detached and then you all of a sudden have the label up here and the radio button is down here and it just doesn't work out great. It's not accessible not really accessible at all, since you have to modify the label to be a button that will then unclick, click the radio button. Kind of clunky. So what we did, we have only one element the user can click, unclick, it will be treated by the browser like a radio button, it will not know it's a normal button, and then unclick, we're going to perform some custom code to put the value that is assigned to it, um, that we will do in WIST, um, in this field. So when we go to waste real quick, you will see that I have this render radio buttons and all the radio buttons are only in one action. So this is really resourceful as well. So we're going to render the list for the radio buttons from our radio button array. We're going to add the V iterator in there so we can iterate over that list. And we're going to set text in the same element from which we're rendering the list. So we're just setting text in that button to, um, 
radios and vhrader.name. So we use the name extension, the one that would be here. You see name Joe. And we're just going to use dot notation to target for the iteration it is right now, the name. And therefore, we have the names. And now we're going to set two HTML attributes. So we're going to do data value. That is the value that the radio button will have. If we go to our variable, we see we have a name and a value. And this value can be, for example, Joe1. Yeah, for example, it could be. Or it could be just a random string, whatever your database needs in this scenario. But if I now were to click on Joe, we'll see, we see the name Joe, but uh, let's refresh this real quick. So it will be Joe one right here. So that is really exciting because we are not using radios here. We're using buttons. So we assign the button a value of Joe one and then we're going to add an area label for accessibility that the screen riddle will tell it your option is Joe one. And maybe you don't want to show the screen reader the value. Maybe you want to show the screen reader the name. Maybe that is if you have like UUIDs as numbers, it'll not make sense if it tells the person needing this accessibility help. Please select UUID 8509, you know, that so you could use the name as well. So it's say option Joe, option Elvis, option Nelson, option Anoy, whatever, and so on. And this is a wonderful thing to add it in here to make it accessible. So what we're doing here, and this is what the set HTML attributes and ways do. Um, in this custom component, we have those attributes in here but we don't have the attributes for the area label or for the data value added to it. So what we can do in WIST, since they're coming dynamically, as I already showed you, we can use a set HTML attribute, which is nothing different than the attributes in Webflow. And we can just set those attributes within WIST for the same component that already has one, two, three, four, five, six attributes added to it. And we're just going to add two more dynamic attributes to have a total of eight attributes. But since two of them need to be dynamically, we just don't need to add all the attributes in WIS. We add the static ones in Webflow, as you can see right here. And we're going to add the dynamic ones in WIS for the data value and the area label to have a native experience for all of those buttons in here and to make them work with our code. And now we have the code. And as you can see here, we have in the input field, um, we have the hidden input field, as I mentioned already before, we have the type text. There is no value, it's an empty value. Important is make an empty value. We have read only, and we add the WIST attribute to radio input value and we do it uh, hidden input equals true. So we hide it based on some code we run. So the thing here is, as you can see, I can navigate through them and we need to do code. We need to use some code for that. But the important thing is if I navigate now on Nelson, we will see that we have the radio input value, which is the attribute of the hidden input carrying the current selected uh, radio button. So the button itself doesn't have a value that will be treated like an input because it's not a real radio button, but it is way simpler than working with a real radio button and way more accessible when you work with dynamic data, right? So what we're doing is the moment this is focused on or the moment I click on, I click on here and the moment there is a click performed on this element, it's getting the value of it and it's putting it as the value of the hidden input field. And the moment I focus on it, every focus here is doing a click on the element it focuses on. So if I focus now on Nelson, it's doing and um, computed a click on Nelson and therefore setting the hidden input value to Nelson. And this is coming from this hidden input. So where whatever is clicked in here is reflected in this hidden input value that will um, be like the radio value, but since we're not using radio buttons, we have to be a bit more creative here. And now we have some custom code here. So what this custom code here is doing 
it is just hiding the hidden input field, basically. Everything that has the attribute of hidden input applied to it, it will just hide it on the live side, but it will show it on this side just so that it's easier for us to understand what it is doing. And that was all the Webflow side, and we already talked about how the radio buttons work, that we're going to render a list from the variable right here, that we're going to set the text using the iteration, and that we're going to add the data value, that is the value that will be shown in here for the click radio button using the hidden input field. And we're going to set the area label to make it accessible. Now, we need to figure out how this whole logic is working from working with the keyboard to um, when I click on here that it will actually update the hidden input field to show me the selected value. And the way we're going to do that is using this custom code we have in here. So what this is doing real quick, it's just basically when you, it is setting the tab index and it's setting the class clicked. So if we go to Webflow in here, the moment I click any of those, we're adding a combo class. I lied, I gotta do one more time to Webflow. So we have the class called clicked. And the moment I click this class here, um, it will just add it the style of clicked, as you can see here. So this code is adding to the current um, item that was clicked or selected the class of a clicked or removing it in this case. This is a preparation for it. And now we're going to set it as selected using the click, what I just talked about. And then we're going to define the new value. So we're going to get the data value attribute of the item we clicked. That was the thing we dynamically set in WIST. When I click on it, we have Joe one. It'll know, okay, oh, this one is Joe one because we have the data value attribute on that button. And then we need to initialize WIST and update the radio input, so the hidden input we have in here in WIST. We're not going to do this statically by attribute within the code. We're going to go through WIST here. And we're going to use WIST's JavaScript API to do that. You don't need to do it if you do it within WIST, but in case you want to move that code to Webflow, I just made sure to already have that added not to, to save you some confusion uh, when you say why it's not working, uh, because you have to initialize WIST. So what we're going to do is we're taking the i.radio input value. Uh, this is this one we have here in WIST, the hidden input field we have in here. And the moment we click this, we click the item, we're going to get the data attribute. And we're first of all, we get the data attribute from the current item. And we call this data attribute that was clicked, selected value. And we have the selected value be the new value of our radio input value. So think of it like this, the moment I click Nelson, it knows, okay, Nelson, the value Nelson, because this Nelson button has the data value of Nelson applied to it. So it knows the data value of Nelson was clicked. And it will now say, you know, selected value. I'll, I'll save that. I'll do a const. I'll save that. So I will do selected value equals Nelson. That was the thing that was just clicked. And now I need to update this in WIST. So because we need to work within the data in WIST in the input variable. So I'm going to do I dot radio input value. This one will now equal Nelson. And as you can see, it'll equal Nelson. That's the thing we're doing here. And now this code is just doing the keyboard uh, part so that we can navigate with this hands free using our keyboard and with the accessibility functions using voiceover since it has the area labels already applied to it. And now, yeah, this is just the end of it, where it will just, if it is focused with the keyboard, it will click on the buttons so that we're not just focusing on the buttons, but as I focus, I will click this button so that it will actually set the value. If you don't have that, you would just focusing around those buttons, but focusing would not click them. So, I would just think of it like my mouse is just over that button, just a bit more accessible for their screen readers. I'm not clicking Joe if I'm just hovering over Joe, if I'm just going over it. I need to click Joe to click Joe. 
So if I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts here, I'm just hovering it over. So our code is doing if the keyboard system hovers over it, it will perform a click on wherever it is currently focused on to then update or run this function to update the input value, the value of our radio buttons. And then I have this little funny stuff here uh, just to set the current name that of, of the thing that was clicked just for illustration purposes of this video so that you can see that it's working and this name is coming right from the value that was selected here and looking into my uh, array and finding the name matching to the value. Um, if you think that's interesting, feel free to play around with that in the clonable uh, because it will be available in the video description. You can clone this whole project. And yeah, thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, 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 really appreciate that. And I hope that we can finally uh, make a difference in how web apps are built in WIST and to offer um, accessible, inclusive experiences for people, um, no matter how they use their devices, if they use screen readers or not. It'll work for every user, but also the people that need this little bit more assistance. And I think that's very important. And I think we should be aiming to have everything accessible in WIST. And I'm going to work on that. And there will be more accessible components coming. And I'll do my best that every future clonable will be accessible, or at least will be somewhat of accessible, because those are the fundamentals of web development. It needs to think about everybody and not just about certain people. So thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for your support. And yeah, see you tomorrow.